In this problem, we're going to test the series below for convergence using the ratio test. The specific series is the series n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial divided by 9 to the n. Remember, when applying the ratio test, what we're doing is we're taking a limit of a comparison of two pieces. So when we're looking at the ratio test, I just want to quickly write down we're comparing the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. And then we're looking to decide what is true about that limit. If it's greater than 1, that means that our series, our original series, diverges. If it's less than 1, that means our original series converges. And if it's equal to 1, that means our series, well, it means it's inconclusive. We need to do another test or do some more evaluation to, ter to, de to, to determine whether our series converges or diverges. So let's go ahead then and calculate our limit. Let's then set up and go about calculating this limit. I'm going to begin with taking the limit the limit as n goes to infinity of, and now I have two terms, my a sub n is on the bottom and my a sub n plus 1 is on the top. Now looking, my, my, looking at my original formula, I have that a sub n is just the term n factorial over 9 to the n. So in the bottom, I'm going to put n factorial over 9 to the nth power. And in the numerator, I'm going to take a sub n plus 1, which is just n plus 1 factorial over 9 to the n plus 1. Now I want to do a little bit of simplification here, so I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. And if you permit, I'm going to take my first numerator, n plus 1 factorial over 9 to the n plus 1, and I'm going to rewrite it and expand it a little bit. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n, times n minus 1, dot, 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 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1, correct? That's n factorial. And 9 to the n plus 1 is 9 to the n times 9 to the 1, using our exponent rules but expanding. Now, I'm dividing by n factorial, and n factorial is n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to 3, 2, 1. And 9 to the n is just 9 to the n. So far, so good. We have a numerator. We have a denominator. Let's simplify this complex fraction by rewriting it as n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 divided by 9 to the n times 9 to the 1. And then let's invert and flip our denominator and make that 9 to the n on top over n times n minus 1 dot 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 all the way down. What this allows me to do is it allows me to now do some cancellations. So I'm going to keep continuing to simplify this complex fraction, making it simpler. Now 9 to the ooh, sorry about that. Now 9 to the n cancels from numerator and denominator. In addition, what else cancels? Let's look here. I have n times n minus 1 all the way down to 1, and that appears both in the numerator and the denominator. And so it looks like what I'm left with is that this is equivalent to taking the limit as n goes to infinity of just the absolute value of n plus 1 over 9. Now, as I send n to infinity, add 1 to it, that's still infinite. Divide by 9, that's still infinite. Notice that my limit becomes infinity. That's clearly larger than the value of 1. And therefore, we can say that the original series diverges according to the ratio test. Let's put these pieces into our boxes for my open math. 
we have for the first piece that f of n is, well, f of n is what? It's the simplified form of the function inside the absolute value. That's the piece down here right before we take the limit. So f of n is the simplified form n plus 1 divided by 9. Once we take the limit, as n goes to infinity, we get infinity, and so you want to enter infinity in for the limit. And because it's greater than 1, you can make the conclusion that the series, therefore, diverges. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out.